Good morning. It's 548 in the morning and I have to do my quick and dirty morning routine. I wanted to share it with you. Uh, this is the general, I have to wake up and do something. So I need the minimum effective dose that's not going to let my body deteriorate <laughs> as I age and, and go forward in life. So I'm going to start with mobility. This is my peanut device. I'm going to start on my back and put this at the bottom of my rib cage. One lacrosse ball on either side of the spine. And then I'm going to tuck my chin, let myself roll back. And then I'm here. I'm going to lift my hips and tuck my tail and then tuck my chin again and then just go five times here, back and forth. On the inhale and exhale, I'm focusing on going as big as possible. Then I'm gonna do opposite arms and switch. In through the nose, out through the mouth. I'm not gonna do separate breath work, so these breaths are very important. Now my hands go behind my head. I'm not gonna crunch toward my knees, I'm gonna crunch toward the ceiling, and I'm inhaling up and exhaling down. Keep the chin tucked. Good. Now I'm going to roll down about two inches, tucking the chin. Once I'm down there, now I'm below my shoulder blades still. Lift the hips, tuck the tail, tuck my chin, and then I go another five. Lots of breath. In through the nose. And arms. You can go slower with the arms if you really want to make a change, if you're trying to influence something, if you're dealing with some shoulder pain or something, going quick is just to maintain. Inhale up, exhale down here, tuck the chin. All the exhale down is when you feel the change. Two more inches. Now I want to be above the bottom of my shoulder blade, that chicken wing that sticks out at the bottom. I'm going to lift my hips, tuck my tail, tuck my chin, go all the way back down to the floor. If I can't reach the floor, I can use a pillow or something to support my head so I'm not just floating in air. You want to be able to relax, but also be tucked in the chin because that lengthens the back of the neck. Lots of breath. Opposite arms. As you're going up, don't let your elbow go out to the sides. Keep your elbows in close to your head. You won't be able to go as far, but you'll make more change at the rib cage. Hands behind the neck. Tuck the chin. Inhale up. Exhale down. Good, we'll go one more. I'm going to sit up to fix my shirt, and then I'm going to roll to the point where the peanut is right across the top of my shoulder blade, and then I'm actually going to roll down toward my feet because that slides the skin up. Then I'm going to lift my hips, tuck my tail, that lengthens my spine from the bottom, tuck my chin, and sometimes I'll even use my hands to help keep my chin tucked as I go all the way down, and then I'll go five times with the arms. <laughs> In through the nose, elbows close together. Even if I can't go all the way to the floor, I want to keep that up. Elbows close together. Then opposites. Starting to get digging into those muscles near the shoulder blades, releasing the spine, releasing the shoulder blades themselves, releasing the neck. Hands behind the neck, behind the head. Tuck the chin. Inhale up. As I go down here, I really use my hands to tuck my chin and I pull with my neck muscles down toward the floor because I'm going to want to tuck my chin up. We want to keep that neck long in the back. You don't have to sit up as high there because you only have to pivot off of the, the tool. Once you're at the bottom now, I'm going to roll up one more inch so I'm right below that bump that's at the base of my neck and I'm going to keep my hand in like an axis of rotation. I'm gonna hold the center, tuck my chin, and then rotate right, rotate left. As I rotate left, I can 
lean to the left a little bit and really feel the lacrosse ball dig in. Lean to the right and feel it dig in. And I just do that, that really directly unwinds the head forward posture of working at a laptop and releases the tension from the neck that's coming from poor posture and from the shoulder blades. Good. All right. And then to come off, I'll roll to the side. Oh, spill my coffee. Ah, it's early. Okay. Next, I'm going to move to my feet because if I have to work in priorities, you know, like I only have 15 minutes or something to get all this done, I'm going to use a lacrosse or a, either like a step in my house or here I'll just use a yoga block so that half my body weight is on this PVC pipe. It's a four inch PVC coupling piece. And I'm just going to roll back and forth until I find where's the most tension in my foot. That's on the inside. That feels pretty good. On the outside, I feel a lot more tension, so I'm gonna focus on there. And I'm really gonna, I don't wanna go on the ball of the foot, because that's a bone. I wanna be on the soft tissue and the plantar fascia in the middle of the foot. And then I'm gonna go in between this middle bone that's in the center of my foot, the base of that fifth metatarsal, and my heel bone right back there. That's a sweet spot for me, particularly because in the past I've had high ankle sprains. That area really wants to get locked up. And when I'm able to sink there, and then I try to sink my whole body weight, I just keep my foot kind of touching this yoga block for balance, but really my body weight and my foot is relaxed. My body weight's sinking into that one spot and try to spread the bottom of the foot open. Good. And just that in intense pressure a couple times can be really good. Then I will go full body weight, even with balance, to see if I can do it. I won't try to sacrifice my, my body for it, but I just want to wake the body up. And so just doing that little bit is helpful. If it's super painful for you, then your foot's not resilient enough yet. You'll get there. And then I'll switch sets. Yeah, you don't want to cause significant trauma when you're doing mobility work, but you do want to influence tissue change. So kind of scanning the foot, seeing if anything is tight on the inside, that feels pretty good. I do this every day. So on the outside now, I'll focus. If you feel tension on the inside, you could just sit in that spot. I'm kind of micro tuning behind that bone, that same thing on this side. This foot's much more resilient than my left. I had a big ankle sprain a year and a half ago on this left side, and it still keeps me focused on it. Good, there's a little release in my foot. I can feel my cuboid just shifted. That's, that's to me like, okay, I can move on. When you feel like there's been a tissue change, you can go to the next spot. All right, so that just woke that up. Next thing is I'm gonna go onto my feet and I'm gonna move my toe up and down. And if you're in a hurry, like I just go one, two, three, next toes, one, two, three, and I'm just pushing one toe down and lifting the other one up. If you don't do this regularly, it would feel pretty intense. You know, like you're, you might rip your toes. And I have known folks in the past who have done that but I just go quick and then I open the toes up and I shift them down and up, shift them down and up, shift them down and up. I'm just shaking the foot. I'll bend the toes down and up and then I'll switch again because usually I'll go through a whole foot mobility series, but I do that in the bathtub on the days that I shave my head because they need attention. We're not barefoot walking around in the wilderness and getting all kinds of different shapes under the foot and challenging them so they end up atrophying in their little foot prisons <laughs> their shoes that are way too cushioned and smashing the toes together and so by just shifting the toes spreading them and bending them and stretching them your feet become much more sensitive and your upper cervical spine and your feet and ankles are the most important balance centers in your whole body so that's why we start with those even if i just did what i just did I would have a much better day. So now I'm gonna come up. I wanna release my hip flexors next. So I'm gonna do a lunge stance here. Turn my back foot in to face the front heel. And then I'm gonna drop my pelvis in the back. So I'm gonna tuck my hips under slightly. My tailbone drops. My hip bones in the front are gonna go on opposite sides of the front foot. So these two bones point on opposite sides of the foot. That's balance in the hips. When I tuck the tail, I want to feel a hip flexor stretch here. 
and then I want to breathe into my belly and then into my chest and then I tuck the chin. So, and when I'm here, I'm up on the ball of my foot in the back and I feel a little stretch in the hip flexor. I exhale only with the belly. Then I breathe into the belly, into the chest, and the neck. I hold all that space and then I just pump my ankle 10 times. I like to do five of them without because I can hold my chest in place. And then I reach my hands up, not elbows out, elbows are in. And I just continue five more times, feeling that hip flexor stretch. Then I really tuck my hips under and I'm gonna drop, pulling myself toward the floor to get a big quad stretch up into that hip flexor. So tuck the pelvis under, belly, chest, neck breath. Pull myself down, feeling that, that hamstring, I'm sorry, that quad really elongate. Every time you're at the top, tuck the pelvis, pull yourself down. <sighs> tuck the pelvis, pull down. <sighs> One more. <sighs> you're releasing that rectus femoris. We'll go opposite side now. So now my left foot's in front, right foot back. Turning that foot in to face the front tucking the pelvis under, coming up on the ball of my foot. I already want to feel that hip flexor stretching. If I don't, I need to open it up more, or turn it in more, or point my hip bones forward, my ASIS. Then I tuck the pelvis, and I start doing my breath. Belly, chest, neck. Hold, hold the chest high. You can even use your skin to lift and exhale the belly. And then inhale again. Lots of expansiveness and then drop that heel. And you want to feel calf stretch, yes, but really focus on that hip. If you can't, again, tuck the pelvis under, add the arms, reaching in, elbows in. Good. Then tuck the pelvis. Start to, you're not just passively dropping, you're pulling yourself toward the floor with your pelvis in actually neutral, but it feels like you're tucking and down. And you want to feel that hip flexor release. Belly, chest, neck, breath. Tuck the pelvis, pull yourself down and feel that hip flexor and that quad. This is not, it's not a passive lunge. It's a really active mobilization of the hip flexor and quad, releasing that from the low back, particularly in the knee. One more tuck, belly. That stabilizes the lumbar spine all the way up. Good. Then I'll go really wide wide as I can go, weight in my heels. Outsides of my feet are parallel to each other, so I'm not toes out, really turned in. And then I'll tuck my hips under me, breathe into my side bodies and lengthen belly first. Then chest really high, tucking the chin. And from here, I already feel a little stretch in my adductors. And now I'm gonna pull my hips back behind me it's like a foundation training founder with the wide legs. And then as I inhale, I shift my hands up to my chest level. Hold that space and exhale with the belly. You're gonna feel the low back kick on. Inhale again, big. Hold all that space, tuck the chin, that same belly, chest, neck breath. And then as I inhale, I'm gonna lower down to the floor, but I'm not gonna let my spine bend, so I'll do it to the side so you can see it. On the inhale, I'm down, and I'm here, but my spine hasn't bent. So if you need a yoga block under your hands, you could be here, you could be here, but the spine needs to be straight. And then, leaning into the heels, exhaling with the belly. <sighs> inhale, fall back further. Push into the outside ball of the foot and the heel, and scoop your feet toward each other a little bit. That kicks on those adductors. Inhale even bigger. Exhale, fall back further. <sighs> Then just open to the right and shift your hips. So I'm turning my hips, turn to the right. And I open, exhale here. And then I'm down three on this side. Inhale, turn the hips. One more time, inhale. Weight in that left heel. Down. Weight in my right heel. Pelvis turns to the left. All the weight in the heels. Open, exhale. Weight in that right heel. <sighs> Inhale to open. Exhale to earn it. <sighs> Good, back down. Now, 
Hands on the knees, inhale first. Hold that space, exhale, keep it there with the belly stabilizing. Inhale, hips come up and forward. And then you could even use your hands or whatever you need to do to like walk yourself out of it because it stresses the knees, the ankles, the hips, and shake it out. Last is gonna be a couple of mobilizations for the spine and then some strength for the core. So again, cat-cow is gonna be waking the most important structure up. Inhale, extend, exhale, and down. As you inhale, inhale, lift up, exhale at the top, and pull your hands and knees toward each other. Then inhale down. As you exhale now, spread your knees and hands away from each other, and you try to go even further. One more time, inhale, hold and pull. And inhale, as you exhale, spread the hands and knees away from each other. Good. Come up into a push-up position. Just go shoulder blades together and apart. And down and up. Shoulder blades together. Down and up. Tuck the pelvis under. Big breath in. Belly, chest, neck. Shoulder blades together. Down and up. Open to the right. As you inhale, you want your nose, chin, sternum, and pubic bone lined up. Lift your right foot. Exhale. Down. Inhale. Left foot comes up. Keep your alignment. Then come back down. Switch to the opposite side. As you inhale, lift your left foot. Then switch. Inhale. Lift your right foot. Then down. Downward dog. Walk the calves into stretching positions. We'll say walk your dog. You can push into the inside ball of the foot, the outside ball of the foot. You can do deep knee bends just to wake that up. It wakes the toes up again. You can spread them out just three times. Good, and then when you feel like you're ready, you walk your feet forward as far as you can. Breath into the belly to stabilize your spine. Once you are at a position, like you might only be here, and then you need to soften your knees a little bit but you can walk your hands back towards you. Lots of stretching, tucking the chin, letting the head rest, belly breaths. Tucking the chin, letting the breath come all the way up to the spine and the top of the head. Now when you go to the get up, weight in the heels, you can use your hands to help you, but do keep your chin tucked and then bend up each segment all the way up. Lots of breath in the belly. All the way up, weight in the heels, really dig into the heels. Feel every segment of your spine lengthening, and keeping breathing into the belly. You're stabilizing yourself, walking your hands up if you need the help. And then relax. And that's it, I'm ready to go. My calls start in about 15 minutes, so I'm just gonna shake it out, get dressed from the waist up for Zoom. Uh, and I hope this serves you. You can throw any element of this in after long work blocks, after long road trips, travels, uh, or right before you go to bed so that you can relax into your sleep. Love you guys.